Hey everybody, welcome back around to the Blog Gang Grill. I'm your host, Doug, here with your video blog for August 4th, 2014. The first blog of August, for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun as we're getting down to baseball, races, NFL two-a-days with the Chargers, the Raiders. We'll do your New York sports update, but first I want to talk a little bit about NASCAR. Yesterday, NASCAR was at Pocono, and we saw... Dale Earnhardt Jr., the most popular driver in NASCAR, pick up a huge win, his third win of the year, and he really puts himself into a good position as the top seed now in the NASCAR standings, and he would be the top seed right now if the chase were to start today. Let's just go to the standings, give you a quick standings update. Really, our top seed right now is Jr., then we have Keselowski and Jimmy Johnson, all with three wins. The D.I.s with two wins, Jeff Gordon, Joey Logano, Carl Edwards, and Kevin Harvick. And then our guys with one win, Kevin, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Eric Elmerola, and Kurt Busch. So we have 11 guys with wins. 12 through 16 are Kenseth, Newman, Boyer, Larson, and Biffle. And guys just outside looking in, Casey Kane's a point out of a transfer spot. Austin Dillon just two points out of that spot. And some other guys that are outside the outside looking in, Martin Truex Jr. in 26, Tony Stewart in 22nd. Those guys just need a win to get in, and there are five races left to go before we bring this chase field down to a final 16, which we will after Watkins Glen. The guy I'm going to be watching this next weekend at Watkins Glen has to be Marcus Ambrose. He's run well at Watkins Glen before. He is right now sitting in the 20th place. In points, If he can somehow find a way to get a win at Watkins Glen, he can pretty much lock himself into that chase, even though he's not quite at a great spot in points right now. I like what he's been doing. I like how he's been running. So watch Marcus Ambrose this week at Watkins Glen. All right, time for our first of two NFL two-a-days. Our first two-a-day is with the San Diego Chargers. Last year, the Chargers were 9 and seven, they lost in the divisional playoffs to the Broncos. They beat the Bengals on Wild Card Weekend. Just a very good offensive team and a run defensive team. Very poor secondary. Struggled to get in the quarterback space. I liked some of their guys. They got. They went out and got some good line players for sure. I'm giving their draft a B. Underrated skill players in the sixth and seventh rounds. A couple of running backs and a wide receiver out of Baylor. Key additions for the San Diego Chargers have to be the running back, Donald Brown, and the safety, Darrell Stuckey, to try to solidify that secondary as a better one than last year. Key departures, I would say the cornerback, Derek Cox, that left. He didn't, he didn't play up to his potential, but he's gone now. And also the fullback, Leron McClain. I think the big question for the, rate, for the Chargers is, can Phillip Rivers duplicate a solid season last year? Maybe with some more weapons, some better players. I think they take a similar path as they did last year, and I have the Chargers finishing at 9-7. and seven. We'll be back with our second two-a-day in just a minute, but let's get to Major League Baseball. Let's go inside the Major League Baseball standings as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. In the American League East, still Baltimore leading the way with a three-and-a-half game lead over Toronto, a five-game lead over the Yankees. In the Central, Detroit has a five-game lead over Kansas City and six-and-a-half over Cleveland. Oakland has Oakland and Los Angeles in the West are tied up in a tight one. Angels are now just one game back of the Oakland Athletics with the Mariners over 500 but ten-and-a-half out. In the National League East, it's starting to get a little wide. Washington has opened up a three-and-a-half game lead as the Braves have lost six in a row. Marlins are seven back and the Mets are eight back. In the central, Milwaukee has a game lead over St. Louis and a game and a half lead over the Pirates. Cincinnati hanging in at four and a half back and out west the Dodgers with a two and a half game lead over San Francisco. In the wild card standings, just to give you a little look at that, the American League, Los Angeles right now has the American League first wild card spot. Toronto behind them in second and the race for the second wild card is heating up Kansas City and the Yankees are a game and a half back Seattle two Cleveland three and Tampa Bay just outside of there at five games back and in the National League we have San Francisco and St. Louis right now San Francisco a half game up on St. Louis Pittsburgh a half game behind St. Louis then Atlanta's two back and Cincinnati is three 
and a half back. We're going to keep you up to date on all the major league standings and keep you updated as well as we move through this month of August. Okay, time for your second NFL two-a-day. Oakland Raiders last year, 4-12, and really struggled. Had Matt McGloin and Terrell Pryor pretty much splitting snaps. Um, very poor pass team and defensively a very bad passing defense. They had a good run team with Darren McFadden and some good run defense. I'm giving their draft an A-. minus. They went out and got some very good defensive line players. They also went out and got the inside linebacker Khalil Mack and Derek Carr, the big-time quarterback out of Fresno State. Key additions, Matt Schaub, they bring him in at quarterback. They bring in also wide receiver James Jones, running back Maurice Jones-Drew, and on the defensive side of the ball, Justin Tuck and Lamar Woodley as defensive ends and Carlos Rogers at cornerback. And really the only key departure was the trading of Terrell Pryor, and they traded that for a seventh-round draft pick. I think the big question is once Matt Schaub leaves Houston, can he find a rebirth in Oakland? And I think Matt Schaub has some good weapons. He has a good team around him, and this team is going to overachieve from what people think. Ultimately, I think this team's going to win seven games, and Vegas has them winning five. So I'm going seven games for Houston as they finish at seven and nine. So the standings in the AFC West are going to shape up with Denver at 12 and four, Kansas City 10 and six, San Diego nine and seven, and Oakland at seven and nine. All right, we'll be back with two days on Wednesday with your Ravens and Bengals. But now it's time for your New York sports update. Yankee injuries have been the big talk of the year. Last night, David, the next injury occurred. David Phelps leaves the game with right elbow inflammation. He was evaluated by team doctors, and Joe Girardi said he may miss his next turn in the rotation. This injury is a pre-existing one. He had some inflammation in this about a month ago against in a game against the Reds. Another pitcher, Michael Pineda, he throws 58 pitches for the scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders yesterday. Topped out his speed at 94 miles an hour. Three and a third innings, three hits, one walk, four Ks in his first rehab start. And Girardi said after the game last night that his next rehab start on Friday could be his final one. And we're still waiting on word today on what how Masahiro Tanaka is doing. He put, was cleared to play catch today, so he was going to play catch today and see if that blood plasma surgery did anything to help with that elbow injury. Yankees on other fronts, 57-53. and 53, They start a seven-game homestand, an important seven-game homestand for sure. Um, that last night they came off a big win, 8-7, to seven, as Brett Gardner is hot right now. Hit his 15th home run of the year. Steven Drew also drove in. Four Yankees are now just a game and a half out of the second wild card. And I'm saying on this seven-game homestand, they need to find a way to win five games. They got a split with the Detroit Tigers, and they got to win all three against the Cleveland Indians. Tonight it will be Scherzer, 13-3 and with a 3-2-7, versus McCarthy, his numbers with the Yankees, 3-0, with a 2.55. That game will start right around 7.05. Mets are 3-3 three and three on their current homestand, still five games under 500. They started up at 12 o'clock today. The current score of that one is tied up at 3 in the bottom of the seventh inning. That was Hudson versus Dylan G. All right, so we'll be back on Wednesday. We're going to go around training camp. We'll do some two-a-days with the Ravens and the Bengals, and we'll talk more Major League Baseball playoff push as well. Remember now to check me out on sportsmindednews.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at YankeeBaller415. Comment, questions, subscribe to my page. Thanks for tuning in to the Blog and Grill. I'll be back on Wednesday. Have a good start to your week.